Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our nephrology discussion in my 5-minute review playlist. We have talked about every topic in this video before in this playlist. So if you think that we are moving fast, go back and watch the previous ones, and it's gonna be a piece of cake. Now, let's dig into it. Nephritic syndrome. Itis means inflammation. Your kidney is inflamed. Your glomeruli are literally bleeding into the urine. Blood in the urine is called hematuria, which is the essence of nephritic syndrome. Nephritic syndrome has seven features, as we'll discuss soon. Nephritic syndrome has four big categories of diseases according to their pathology. So pathologically, we have about four histologies. Clinically, we have seven features. Etiologically speaking, some of these diseases are genetic, some of them are immunological, some of them are a mix, some of them are triggered by bacteria like post, streptococcal, glomerulonephritis. This is my playlist. Please watch these videos in order. And this is my nephrology playlist too. Normal kidneys should not let protein or red blood cell into the urine. But if I have nephrotic syndrome, I'm losing protein in the urine. If I have nephritic syndrome, however, I'm losing blood in the urine. Nephritic is blood, hematuria, because itis means inflammation, blood. Nephrotic syndrome was four clinical features, high protein in my urea, low protein in my emia, edema, and hyperlipidemia. But nephritic syndrome is seven features, hypertension, hematuria, jugular venous distension, oliguria, mild edema, and proteinuria, intrarenal azotemia, which is acute kidney failure. Nephritic syndrome, itis, inflammation, your glomeruli are inflamed and they are bleeding. How do I know that the blood is coming from the kidney itself, not from the ureter or from the urinary bladder or from the urethra? How do I know? Because you will see red blood cell casts and dysmorphic red blood cells in the urine. When you see both, you know it's coming from the kidney for sure. It's called itis, meaning inflammation, which means hypercellular and inflamed glomeruli. If I lose too much blood, I can get anemia. There is limited proteinuria, way less than the nephrotic syndrome counterpart. I have intrarenal azotemia or acute renal failure with high urea and creatinine in the blood. The symptoms of acute renal failure and when the kidney is toast, you're not producing any urine. That's why urine output is the fifth vital sign, so to speak. I can get some salt water retention, hypertension, jugular venous distension. Don't forget the edema with the periorbital puffiness. Some nephritic syndrome pathologies have immune complex deposition. Others do not. Medicosis, the urine looks dark. Does that mean that this is nephritic syndrome? Wait, wait, wait a second. This dark urine doesn't necessarily have to be blood cells. Could be just a pigment. It could be myoglobin, hemoglobin. For you to know that these are actual red blood cells, you have to look under the microscope to see the individual red blood cells. That was the first step. The second step is who is to blame? But before we point fingers, please understand that the urine dipstick is not the best to diagnose the presence of red blood cells in the urine because it cannot tell the difference between hemoglobin, myoglobin, and actual individual red blood cells. The microscope can tell the difference, however. Now to the second question, who is to blame? Should I blame the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, or the urethra? And for this, you look at dysmorphic red blood cells and red blood cell casts. If you see them, you can bet there ain't money. The pathology is in the kidney. Third question, should I blame the kidney glomeruli or should I blame the kidney tubules? Order the beta-2 microglobulin and it will help you tell the difference. I have a separate video about this in my lab's playlist. Nephritic syndrome clinically was seven features. Histopathologically is four subtypes. We have acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, IgA nephropathy and Alpert syndrome. And then we have two doofuses in the middle that could be nephrotic or could be nephritic. We call them nephrotic nephritic. When it comes to the first doofus, diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis, be very careful because it can cause rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. As for the second doofus, membranoproliferative, it has two subtypes. Type 1 and guess what? Type 2. Type 1 is associated with hepatitis B, hepatitis C, cryoglobulinemia. Type 2 is the dense deposit disease with C3 nephritic factor. 
Here's how your kidney looks like. Here is arterioles, afferent going in, efferent coming out. Between the vessels, mesangio is the mesangial cells. Meso means middle, angio means vessel. On the inside of the vessel, you have endothelium, then basement membrane, then epithelium. Endothelium inside, epithelium outside. And between them, there is the glomerular basement membrane. If I have post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, you will see sub-epithelial or humps. We call them humpy bumpy. But how about if you have rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis? All of this outer parietal epithelium will look like a crescent because all of this is injured. Depending on the subtype of rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, you will have certain deposits. If I have good pasture syndrome, there is usually no deposits, but with immunofluorescence, you will see the membrane lighting up. The glomerular basement membrane is lit with antibody. If the RPGN is caused by diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis, you will see subendothelial deposits. If I have one of the vasculitides, such as granulomatosis with polyangiitis, microscopic polyangiitis, or Churg-Strauss syndrome, you will not see any immune complexes. How about IgA nephropathy? IgA nephropathy is a problem here in the mesangium. We have stupid IgA antibodies in the mesangium of the kidney. How about Alport syndrome? Alport syndrome is a mutation of collagen type 4, and collagen type 4 is in the floor, meaning the basement membrane of the kidney. Alport syndrome does not have any immune complex deposits. Let's review the first doofus, which is nephrotic nephritic, called diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. Don't forget the association with lupus. Don't forget the wire looping of the capillaries. Do not forget it is sub-endothelial immune complex deposition. And these are granular, not linear, granular. Linear would be good pasture syndrome. The second doofus, nephrotic nephritic, membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis, type 1 has subendothelial immune complexes too. Similar to uh, diffuse proliferative, that's right, but the association is slightly tweaked. Hepatitis B, hepatitis C, cryoglobulinemia, don't forget your tram track action. Type 2, you have deposits that go into the glomerular basement membrane, intramembranous that is, and of course I'm gonna split the banana, I mean the basement membrane, giving me the classic tram track appearance, Type 2 is associated with C3 nephritic factor. Hey medicosis, using the patient's history, can I tell the difference between IgA nephropathy and post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis? Because my papa drives the Rolls Royce. Yes, you can. Both of them will start with upper respiratory tract infection, and then there is blood in the urine, nephritic syndrome. But there is a time frame in between. If you had to wait about a few days, and sometimes it happens on the same day, then it's IgA nephropathy. But if you had to wait weeks until the kidney starts to bleed, then this is post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. The way I remember it is that the word post means delayed, longer time. Let's review post-streptococcal. We have a kid, group A beta hemolytic streptococci, causing pharyngitis or skin infection. One to three weeks later, I get blood in the urine. It's the most common post-infectious glomerulonephritis in children. Hypertension, hematuria, fever, and proteinuria, and some robust periorbital swelling. Very important. Let's go to the labs. Positive anti-DNAs, positive or negative anti-ASOs, depending on what happened. If we started with pharyngitis, they will probably be positive, but if you started with skin infection, ASO will be negative because it's destroyed by the cholesterol in your skin. The deposits are sub-epithelial. Don't forget post streptococcal, the P and the P. It's sub-epithelial. Contrast that with the previous ones, diffuse proliferative and membranoproliferative. They were sub-endothelial. But post streptococcal is sub-epithelial. When I say post, it means delayed. How do I treat supportive care and penicillin? Next, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, some crescent action. From drops of blood in the urine to complete kidney failure in a matter of days. What the what? It's rapidly progressive. BUN and creatinine are off the charts, very high. 
and we classify RPGN via immune complexes. If you find them and they are linear, it's good pasture. If you find these antigen antibody reactions and it's granular, then ask yourself, are they subendothelial, diffuse proliferative, and the patient usually has lupus. If you find a subepithelial, it's post streptococcal, and this is a kid with pharyngitis or skin infection about two weeks earlier. If you find nothing, no immune complexes, it's one of the vasculitides. C. anca is positive in granulomatosis with polyangiitis. P. anca is positive in the rest of them, including microscopic polyangiitis and Churg Strauss syndrome. The prognosis is horrible. It's rapidly progressive. Try your best to manage the symptoms to treat the underlying condition. Dialysis for kidney failure. Try to treat the underlying disease. And if you have good pasture syndrome, you will need plasma exchange to wash out these antibodies that are targeting my type 4 collagen. Good pasture syndrome. Everything here is 2. It's associated with HLA-DR2, which is class 2, major histocompatibility complex. It's male dominant. 2. Remember King Tut, who was a pharaoh. He was a male pharaoh. The patient has two problems, antibodies against the basement membrane of my alveoli or my glomeruli. That's why I get hemoptysis followed by hematuria. Two pathologies, two symptoms. Two plus two is four. I have problems in collagen type four. That's why it's in the basement membrane. You said type four? Yes, give me four methods to treat good pasture syndrome. Number one, wash out those antibodies. How? Plasma exchange or plasmapheresis? Two, since it's caused by antibodies, you can give immunosuppressants. When everything hits the fan, you go to three or four. Three is dialysis, four is kidney transplant. Next, we have IgA nephropathy, genetic disease, the multi-hit hypothesis, decreased galactosylation of IgA. That's why it accumulates in your serum and it hits your kidney, it hits your lungs, etc. It can even hit your skin in Henoch, Shonley, and Purpura. You can have anti-glycan antibodies, hypertension, hematuria, fever, proteinuria, maybe some periorbital swelling, but this is less common than with the post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. IgA nephropathy is the most common chronic glomerulonephritis in children. It's a triad of coughing up blood, blood in the urine, and I have pharyngitis at the same time, or at least just one or two days earlier, not weeks, days. That's why they call it sin, pharyngitic macroscopic hematuria. IgA is everywhere. It's even in the mesangium. IgA mesangium. Treat with immunosuppressants, give ACE or ORBs. Don't forget the association with Henoch, Shanley, and Purpura. Last, Alpert syndrome, mutation of alpha chain of type 4 collagen in the glomerular basement membrane. Not just in my kidneys, by the way, in my eyes, in my ears as well, because you have collagen like in many organs. Mostly X-linked recessive, that's why it's mostly boys. Diagnosis, the clinical triad of blood in the urine, sensory neural deafness, and ocular findings, including congenital cataracts bilaterally and anterior lenticonus. The anterior surface of your lens is bulging forwards like a freaking cone. Electromicroscopy, banana split action, splitting of the lamina densa of the glomerular basement membrane because of type 4 collagen, lamellated glomerular basement membrane. And of course, you can order genetic tests. Complication, end-stage renal disease. Try to treat it symptomatically, but in many cases, the patient will need dialysis and or kidney transplant. That was the best review of nephritic syndrome in the history of the earth. So please pause and review. These nephrology videos were cool, but they do not hold a candle to my antibiotics course. 40 videos on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com to teach you about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. I also have a renal physiology course, a cardiac pharmacology course, and others. Thank you for watching, lovely people. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support the channel here or here. Go to my website to download Medicosis Premium courses. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.